All things are possible. God never fails. And you are a piece of that which never fails. One of the great teachers in my life was Carlos Castaneda. And Castaneda talked about his teacher, who was what they call an agua, a, a Native American term that uh, refers to uh, all that is knowable. And his teacher told him that your life is like being born into a, uh, a room, a mansion, if you will, that has a thousand rooms, but you're born into one room. And this one room is called daily human awareness. And the only way you can get in is through conception and birth. You're in. And the only way you can get out, we are taught, is to die. So we spend our lives in this mansion in one room, even though there's 999 other rooms. We don't know how to get out into those rooms unless we die. So we wait to die. And what his teacher told him is, I can teach you how to get out of the room of daily awareness and into the other 999 rooms. And if you stay with me and learn all that I have to give you, I can teach you how to get out of the house altogether without having to die. And what we have to do in order to get to that place where we can take the keys and unlock the self-imposed prisons or the prisons that we have given ourselves on the basis of what we have come to believe is our limitations, what we can and can't do. We have to let go of that. And I call it rewriting our agreement with reality. We literally have to make a, a, a whole new contract with what it is that I perceive to be what is possible for me. And in order to do that, we have to shift out of the things that we have come to believe in and everything that you came to this program watching tonight that you believe in was handed to you by someone else outside of you was handed to you by the experiences or testimony of someone in the past. And because it comes from outside of you, there is still an element of doubt. And this element of doubt isn't bad, but it keeps you from reaching higher levels because what you think about is what expands. And if you're thinking doubt, then doubt is what expands. William Blake said, if the sun and moon should ever doubt, they would immediately go out. So how do we get past what we believe in or what has been handed to us and still honor it and be grateful for all of the teachers and all of the people who have come before us? So what we have to learn to do is let go of that tribal consciousness and shift to what I call a knowing. Now there's a big difference between what you believe and what you know. Everything that you know is something that you have made conscious contact with conscious contact. So there's nobody out there watching, there's nobody in this world who knows how to swim, who learned it by somebody else telling them that you can swim, or by watching Mark Spitz go through the water, <laughs> or by uh, observing other people doing it. You may remove some of the doubt, but you will never know how to swim until you get in the water and blub around a few times and then do it. And then you'll have a knowing, and that knowing is something that you'll never lose, just like riding a bicycle or dancing the Macarena or making a, a, a lemon meringue pie or anything that you know how to do. It's because you've made conscious contact. And I'd like to suggest that there's a big difference between knowing about a divine presence, knowing about a sacred awareness, knowing about God, and knowing God. There's a big difference. Just like there's a big difference between knowing about the possibility of being able to heal myself of something that is bothering me, perhaps a disease process. I perhaps may believe that it's possible because I've read other people and I've heard others say it. And I've read the testimony and I've listened to the tapes and I've gone to the seminars. But until you have made conscious contact with it, you'll never know it. Everything else that you have on our planet, that we have on our planet, comes about as a result of thinking. Thinking. Thought makes it so.
All right? This microphone comes about as a result of thinking. Somebody imagines it. Somebody then tells somebody else about it. And, it's, and it creates it. The dress that you're wearing, the shirt that I'm wearing, the shoes that you have, the stage, these cameras. Everything that you see that wasn't given to us was created by man as a result of the way that we think. The way that we think. So what gets inside of us as a cell comes about as a result of the way that we choose to think in our lives. Very important principle to understand. Because once you get a hold of thinking and that it creates everything that you have in your life, you can change and make it as absolutely perfect as you want it to be because thought makes it so. 99% of who you are, you can't touch, you can't see, you can't smell. 99% of you is untouchable, unsmellable, invisible. It is what Ken Kais has called your, your conscious awareness. It's, your, it's what looks out behind those eyeballs. What is that? It isn't, it isn't cells. It's some kind of conscious awareness that you are. And make no mistake about it, you've occupied a whole lot of bodies already. If 99% of who you are, you can't touch and you can't feel and you can't smell, then where did, what is it? Who is it? Where are you? What is this thing called your essence or who you are? And where does it go? Now think of this. You were in a body. I have a little baby girl who's uh, 11 months old. And, she, and we were all in a body that size. What's well, only a body about this big? Got fingers only this long. <laughs> you know? Got uh, tiny, tiny little parts all over the place. I mean, she's only this tall. Now, is that her? Is that her essence? Because I have other children who are much older, and I am much older than that, and I can remember being three and being in a different body. Still me, still my essence there, different body, totally different, doesn't even look anything like when I was 11 months old. And then I was 13, and I had a funny body at 13. <laughs> but still my essence was there in a whole new body. Hairs growing all over the place that I didn't understand, all kinds of things happening to it, you know. Then hairs falling out of it later on, you know. Looking at those hairs that fall out and say, what held it in yesterday, you know. What, I, don't know I don't even understand that, okay. And so it's like who I am has been in many, many bodies already, all right. And that essence, you see, everything on our planet that is alive can never die. It can never die. Life doesn't die, it just transforms, it just moves on to new places and new ways of being, new ways of being. And the way of being that is the most transcendent of all is this way that comes from seeing yourself as love and only having that to give away, only having that to give away. Let's say I were to stand up here in front of you and just visualize for a moment that I have an orange. And I take this orange and I squeeze it as hard as I can squeeze it, okay? What's going to come out? Juice. What kind of juice? Orange juice. Apple juice, any chance? Once in a while? Come on, now and then. A little mango juice come out of an orange once in a while? No mistakes, right? Never, no matter what. Next question. Everybody passes. These are easy, okay? Why? When you squeeze an orange, as hard as you can squeeze it, does orange juice come out? Because that's, not because it's an orange, because that's what's inside, isn't it? On our planet, when you squeeze something, what comes out of it is what's inside. Not too difficult, all right? Does it matter if your mother squeezes the orange? Does it matter what instrument she uses? Does it matter if you just had your period and then you squeeze an orange? <laughs> Does it matter if your boss squeezes it? How about if your kids do it? Your kids squeeze an orange. Does it matter? Does it matter what time of day? Suppose they do it at noon, all right? How about at four in the morning? Does that matter? Whenever you squeeze an orange, the only thing you get out is what's inside, right? No arguments. Same thing works for you. Same principle works for you. It's a principle of the universe, all right? Someone squeezes you. That is, someone puts pressure on you. Someone says things about you that you don't like. Someone puts uh, attention on you, whatever. Your boss says something to you that you don't like. And out of you comes anger. And out of you comes hatred. And out of you 
comes fear, or out of you comes stress, or out of you comes tension. Why? Is it because of your boss and the way they squeeze you? Never. Is it because of your mother? I mean, she really can be a pain sometimes, right? Is it because of your children? No. What comes out of you always when someone squeezes you is what's inside. This is the, the vital principle of being a no-limit person. It's so crucial to get this and understand that. That if you have any hatred in your heart for anyone in this world or any anger or any fear or any of those things, it has nothing to do with the rest of the world. It only has to do with what you put inside. Now, how does what gets inside of you get there? That's the key. How does it get there? As you think. Only as you think. You see, there's no anger in the world. There's no stress in the world. There's no tension. It's perfect. We've already established. It's perfect place. It works just fine. It's all flowing the way it's supposed to flow. The evidence for it is, it is. <laughs> That's all the evidence you need. Just look around you. Everything out there is a miracle. Everything, including you. There are no mistakes. It's all perfect. And everything that happens to you in your life, whether it's a trauma, whether it's a disease, whether it's somebody treating you in a certain way, there's a lesson in all of it. No limit people understand the lesson in life and therefore celebrate the lessons. It's true. And when you get to that point in your life where you're not cursing the things that come your way and blaming the things that come your way and particularly blaming it on somebody else and you hear it all the time she hurt my feelings how's that possible how can anybody hurt your feelings your feelings come from your thoughts no one can hurt your feelings without your consent no one can make a fool of you without your consent no one can embarrass you without your consent these are choices that you have that come from the way that you think 